Hey everyone, HydraHud here. This video is probably going to be a little bit shorter. I don't have a ton to say about this one. It is a good story. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I actually ended up watching, binge watching all uh, 24 episodes of the anime um, because of these. <laughs> and that's one of the things I actually want to talk about is the big difference, well, main difference between this and what you see in the anime. And I'm also reading the uh, individual chapters for the arc after this one uh, because they're in a shonen jump which i have um <clears throat> so if you're not familiar with this series this follows follows you who was basically raised as human cattle with his um orphan family by vampires uh essentially what happened was is a disease spread across the world and killed off as far as they were concerned, everybody who was over 13. The vampires came in, rounded up all the children, brought them down underground with them, and been using them as human cattle, where they bleed them out for sustenance. <coughs> Albeit, the vampires do have laws saying that they can't feed directly off the humans to kind of prevent them from going insane and over-slaughtering them, but they're still being used as a day-to-day -day food source. The main character is you, and... Uh, Second main character, I guess you could say, is Makayla, which you can see on the cover here. So basically what happens is while they're slaves, Makayla starts um, offering himself up to another vampire, to a vampire, uh, and letting him feed directly from him, which of course the vampire prefers. By doing that, he gets special benefits, and he ends up being able to steal a map of the city where they're from. So you and Makayla gather up their family, the orphanarium family. <clears throat> and they all decide to make a grand escape. Of course, it's a trap. The vampire just likes to see the uh, look at defeat on humans' faces, uh, and then he slaughters you and Michaela's family. Michaela ends up sacrificing himself to save you, and uh, you runs out, finds out that only about 90% of humanity was killed off. There still are a lot of humans, and they're working very hard to try and eliminate the vampire threat. He ends up joining up this a group of vampire hunters um, to fight the vampires because humans are so substantially weaker than them they have to make packs with demons. These demons inhabit weapons which give the humans a uh, an edge on the vampires. The vampires also have superpower weapons of course. Their, their weapons feed off of their blood. So I don't want to ruin too much about why Mikaela is still around even though he's dead or anything like that but uh, <clears throat> what I do want to talk about is in the books, or the mangas, um, there's no homoeroticism between the boys. It's all very much just straight friendship. But if you watch the anime, they are like very, very, very on the whole yo fix where they're trying to, to basically, it's like the anime is shipping these two characters together. Um, so that fans can fan service them together. But in this, that shit never happens. And it's really, really annoying because a lot of the characters come off as pretty uh, feminine anyway, I guess because of the voice actors they choose. That's really annoying. Um, but overall, the anime was actually really, really good. I enjoyed it. It follows the storyline pretty well, um, pretty spot on. They just add a lot of fan service stuff that I don't agree with and don't really understand. <coughs> the story in this is by Takaya Kagami, and the art is by Yamato Yamamoto. <laughs> and the uh, storyboards by Daisuke Furuya. Uh, just to give you an idea of what kind of art you can expect from this, we got our nice little fold-out they always give. I wonder if people actually hang those up. But the artwork you can expect is pretty, I would say, not standard shonen, but fairly standard shonen style manga. Um, it's quality, though. I really do enjoy it, especially when their uh, boss starts really playing with his demon powers. They do a very, very good job on <laughs> some of the more evil aspects of the series. And... Um, I would say there are quite a few tropes, like the vampire queen is clearly, I mean, she looks like a, an eight-year-old girl, but she's thousands of years old. The lolly trope 
It's unfortunately something you just kind of had to deal with with this kind of stuff. But the other characters are pretty fantastic. <clears throat> also, the vampires call back to a lot of historical figures. Like, one of the vampires is Farid Bathory. Um, because of the... Oh, now I'm blanking on her first name, but... Bathory, she used to bathe in the blood of young women to try and retain her age. Um, there's also uh, Cruel Tepes, who's named after Vlad Tepes, who is basically the guy that inspired the original Dracula story uh, by his actions. Um, pretty much all of the nobility in the vampire line have famous last names that tie back to historical um, vampire fiction, which is neat, especially if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not a vampire guy, but I'm not opposed to them, especially when they're done fairly well. And these guys are pretty heartless and murderous, which I enjoy. Um, so I do recommend this. This is a Viz book, so it's only $10 in the U.S. Which is the nice thing about Viz, is their stuff is pretty cheap. And usually fairly good. Um, so I do recommend this. Uh, I'd say give it a shot. Especially if you're into vampires. Um, and I think as far as like a maturity rating, uh, anybody... I don't know. If I had a 12-year-old, I'd let them read this. It's not that bad. <clears throat> Official rating, I think, is like 14 or something. It's pretty tame for older teens. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, it is really tame if, unless you're bothered by violence. But um, that's really all i got to say on that. Thanks for watching. Hail Hydra, baby.